What's up, everybody? This is Post Production Pi, editor in chief for srlounge.com. Now, welcome to another installment of our weekly ordinary to extraordinary raw edit, where we're going to be featuring the Lightroom preset system V5. And as always, we're going to first demonstrate how to create our effects using the preset system, but then we're going to be going through the actual develop settings just to help everybody understand what's going on with each different look and effect. Now, because we've done so many of these weekly edits so far uh, and done so many of these edits in general, we're going to be going over basically what's new with each effect. So that way we're not kind of going over all the basics and everything. Well, we've already done that many, many times. So if you are kind of missing out on some of the previous stuff, be sure to check out the previous tutorials. And if you are interested in the SR Lounge Lightroom preset system, we'll just click in the description to take you to the SR Lounge store where you can learn more. All right, so let's get started. In this video, we're going to be going over a vintage color fade for the image that you see here. And let's talk about this image real quick. We have a couple options when it comes to this image. We can do a softer kind of vintage fade, but since this image is so far pulled back, it's it's this shot of this family here, uh, and it's very far pulled back. We also have this cool car in there. I'd really rather go with a more of a vivid look as opposed to a soft look, although both would work pretty well for this image. Now I'm going to hit I to bring up my information. This was shot on a 5D Mark III. It was on a 2470 2.8L uh, Mark II lens, which is a great lens. It was at 70 millimeters. We got a little bit extra compression at that focal length, which kind of pulls in the background a little bit more. It was shot at 1 500th of a second at f5.6, so everything is quite sharp, and it was at ISO 100. Now with this image, it's going to work very well. I always say, you know, apply the effect that works with the image and the mood that you're going for. I don't apply vintage effects to every single image that I work on, but when it works, it works. And this image, it works in every single way. The story that we're telling, it has very much a vintage vibe. Just look at the clothing. Our clothing here is very much vintage. We have this, well, we have our lovely guy here that's kind of dressed in like his, uh, it almost looks like kind of what you'd be going to work in in like say the 60s or 70s. I mean, you can go to work today in that, but it's kind of a timeless outfit that could have been worn a long time ago, especially with this hat. Our, our, our lovely female subject here, our mom that's dressed in this vintage dress that looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and we have daughter here that looks like it might be a, a more modern dress, but we really can't tell. There's not enough detail that will really know, and it's not going to really offset the image at all. We also have this uh, car that's a vintage car placed in a field. So everything about this image screams vintage, and that's why we're going to process it that way because it's going to work with the image. I would never go and apply vintage effects to every single image I'm delivering in a set, by the way. So just know that that's not what we do. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into our base, vivid, stylized foundation presets over here. And we're gonna flip through the different filmic presets that we have. And I already know that probably for this type of image, we're gonna to wanna to stick with a bright fade because we wanna brighten the image. We want it to have a nice, bright overall tone. Uh, and I think that's gonna just work best. So neutral, if we start to brighten this, there's just too much kind of contrast and stuff over here. We can flatten it out and see if we flatten out the contrast. But I think, yeah, we're still going to be better off with the bright fade. Uh, let's check out the punchy. Let's see, punchy color filmic. Yeah, this one's got way too much contrast. Dark fade. This one, I think, by the time we brighten, yeah, we're not, we're not going to do that one either. We could lower the contrast and use this as well. But let's go ahead and do a bright fade with a color filmic look. And I'm going to bring down the exposure because the preset itself is actually brightening. The curve itself is actually brightening. Okay, so we're going to bring it down to 1.5 for now. We can make adjustments again to fine tune later on. One thing I would like to do is get my kind of temperature dialed in. So as we're making a little bit of temperature adjustments, we can kind of see where our you know correct temperature or see where our correct color is. So we're going to go up a little bit. I'm going to get a little more pinks in the image. Right about here is where I would say I would leave it. It's actually really close to where we shot it. Okay, so let's go over here to our uh, next step, which is going to be our curves. What I'm going to do is, well, for this image, we can do a whole variety of things. Again, there's nothing wrong. You, you can't really mess up this process. Choose a curve that's the color that you kind of want for this scene. For me, it's a warm scene to begin with, so I'm going to choose a warm curve. We have our bright washes here. So let's go with an amber and just kind of flip through and see what we like best. Okay, and for this image, I think I really want to just go with probably either an apricot or an amber. Let's go with an amber first, and then we can kind of use additional toning if we want to, to get a, a little bit of SFX to get a little more color in there. One thing I'm going to make an adjustment to is the contrast. I don't want the contrast to be very high here. I want it to fade off a little bit. So let's go between a light and a zeroed, and I think a zeroed it looks a little bit nicer. So let's do zeroed out. 
Moving down, let's jump into our special effects. So BCAS, we're down to the last thing. Uh, let's go to yellow. Let's see, yellow violet looks nice. Orange blue looks nice. Orange teal looks nice. I'm gonna go with a little bit of orange blue so we have a little more blues in the shadows. All right, so that's great. If we want extra effects, we can add that. I actually do want maybe a little bit of uh, lens edge softening. So let's pull in a medium edge soften and see where we're at. Maybe I'll do a light instead. I wanna keep it more on the subtle side. I don't want it to be too strong. And it looks like at with the heavy, it's kind of strong on the heavy. It actually doesn't look bad though. I'm gonna go with light just so it keeps it a little bit more subtle. All right. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm not sure yet. Let's see. Eh, let's go with light. <laughs> We'll just go with light, okay? One thing I forgot to do is also adjust my crop. I'm just gonna hit R and straighten the image out just a bit. It's just a tiny bit off. So I'm not gonna go all the way to the point where the car, well, yeah, if I go all the way to the point where the car, that line right there looks like it's straight, I think our couple and our family is gonna be looking a little bit crooked. So let's just uh, adjust back one step, one step, there we go. Okay, so let's just go back and adjust in so it's they're just a little more standing straight and the line is a little more straight in the image. That's looking really nice. So let's go ahead and grab a graduated filter and we're gonna do a little burning and dodging. We can see our pins are already set from that lens edge softening. By the way, if you drop in this burn first and then select the edge softening, it will reset it because it basically is gonna apply the edge softening over whatever graduated filters you already have. So always save these graduated filter adjustments and other adjustments just for last. It's always a kind of a best practice. Now because this left side of the image is a little bit brighter than the right side, I'm just gonna pull this over from right to left and we're gonna make a very subtle adjustment. So I'm just gonna go one more time. I'm gonna actually pull a little bit forward uh, a little more so we can get it in closer. And I'm gonna pull this out to about maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Okay, so that's looking pretty solid. Now I also wanna adjust the brush in front, but because we pulled that over from the right side, we're gonna adjust this with a graduated brush, or uh, sorry, with an adjustment brush instead of a graduated filter. So let's pull this in. I'm gonna actually adjust the size down and let's just start dragging this in and getting the brush a little bit adjusted. I'm gonna pull it over to that adjustment brush effect, or I'm sorry, the graduated filter effect. Holding Alt or Option on a Mac, we're gonna pull this out right here. We don't wanna cover them at all. And then I'm gonna bring out that effect just a tiny bit. So we kind of match the left and right grass. Okay, that's looking pretty solid. Overall, I might brighten up the image a tiny bit. I might tweak my temperature a tiny bit just to warm it up a little bit more. But this is looking really, really nice. So I'm, I'm digging where it's at and I think I can leave it. I might just go and adjust the right grass a tiny bit. It looks like it's a little bit brighter than the left side. So let's make one tiny adjustment. Let's grab that brush again and let's just pull it down a little bit. Okay, this is looking a little bit better. Maybe we'll go down to that 0.5 mark. I think it looks pretty solid there. And we are done now with this vintage, but kind of vivid poppy look for this family shot here that we have in front of this beautiful car in our field. Let's check out the before and the after before we go over the develop settings and talk about what's kind of different with this image. So here's the before by hitting backslash. Here is that after we have a nice, warm, vintage poppy look. Again, if we wanna save this to a mixology, we can. I'm not gonna save it. I'll leave you guys with that option on your own. All right, now over here on the right side, let's talk about what's different. So everything in the basic you guys have already seen, let's drop into the tone curve. So here in the tone curve, we're using a bright wash and you can see how it's pulling up all from the shadows, from the blacks basically through the shadow midtones, midtones, midtone highlights, and even up into the highlight point. And we're dragging down the whites just a bit. So basically we're brightening the overall image while kind of killing the shadows, which gives us some fade, and killing a little bit of our, our whites up here, which gives us, again, a little bit of clipping on that highlight side, gives us a little bit more fade as well. Okay, so that is the bright wash. Now, this is an amber bright wash, so if you look, we have a little bit of additional reds that are being applied. We look and we see a little bit more greens that are being applied, so we're lifting greens a little bit in the mid-tones and the highlights. And if we go to the blues, we're dropping blues slightly in the highlights and in the midtones just a bit. This gives us that slight amber toning in that RGB curve. Okay, so going down more, we have the yellow, and I think we chose yellow blue toning for this one. So we have yellow applied in our highlights. Over here in our shadows, we have our blue. We have our balance set to 30. That's really all that's different in this image, and we've already kind of gone over that, but it's good to kind of do a little review. Sharpening and everything is the same, 71.5, 10, 30. 
lens vignetting is pulled in a little bit because we wanted to darken the edges just a tiny bit on this image. We also have a grain being uh, added at 70, 30, 30. So I think this is the heavy grain that's being added right now. It looks really nice. Again, if we zoom in to check out our detail, we have a nice bit of grain. If we want to adjust the grain, we always can. Again, it really depends on how big you're blowing up this image to be. If we're blowing up to be a large image, I'll probably adjust the grain back to say a light or a medium grain. If it's going to be a web size image only just for computer use, then I'll probably Probably leave it as a heavy film grain because you're not going to be able to see it when you're zoomed out to this level. So we'll leave it at heavy for this image on, on this setting. All right, so again, that's it. Let's check out the before and after one more time. Here is that before. Here's our after. Beautiful vintage effect. If you guys want to save out the mixology, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. All right, so great job, and we'll see you all in the next episode.